Hi everyone and welcome back to the second part of the SQL case study that is Pizza Runner. Alright, so in the last video we solved the first part or part A where we uh, you know saw 10 questions and wrote queries for each one of them. Today what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the second part which is called Runner and Customer Experience and this contains seven questions in total so I'll help you tackle all these seven questions in this particular video. So let's get started with the first question. The first question of part B says how many runners signed up for each one week period that is week starts on 1st January 2021 right. Now uh, right below I have written a very small note that is we basically need for each week how many runners signed up which, which is nothing but registered uh, number, okay. And what we are going to do, do is, we are going to show week starting date on the left and count of runners on the right. Now, this will make your life easier. Uh, the question, if you just read it once, may be a little confusing. But basically, what you want to achieve from this question is, show week starting date on the left. For example, if the week starts on this particular date, let's say. So, you show this date on the left. And on the right, you just need the count of runners, okay? Now, if, if you are actually using, uh, let me just, you know, remove other questions, okay? So, if you are using, let's say, MySQL or uh, PostgreSQL, this may come in a little bit easier for you because there is predefined function on how you can do it. But I'm using SQL Server, so I'll make it a little uh, different in this case. And also this will give you a sense of some logic behind you know what goes in when you try to uh, do something like this. So basically uh, what we'll do is we'll start with a CTE, a common table expression. And I'm going to write uh, the common table expression as uh, with weekly periods as. Okay. Now let me explain what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the runner IDs first, okay. So, runner IDs of all the runners that is uh, this table, okay, the table on the right. So, I'll take the runner IDs and I have the registration dates, okay. So, I'll work with this table, all right. So, I'm going to say select runner ID, okay. What else do I want? I want the week start date, okay. I want the date on which the week starts. For example, my date here is, uh, the first date is 1-1. One, one. So obviously we are starting our date with, that is week starts on this date. So this is sorted, the first entry is sorted. The next entry is 3-1, basically two days after the uh, registration date of the first runner or you know two days in the same week. So we have this runner ID 1 and runner ID 2 in the same week. But if you go to runner ID 3, it comes seven days later. That is the week is now week two. Okay. And similarly, if you go to 15, 15 comes in the third week because we are counting the week start from 1st of January. Okay. So let me show you how to do that, how to build the logic for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to use a combination of uh, date functions. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the difference between the start date that is this date and whatever date is there in the registration of the particular runner okay so for that which uh, function can i use i can use date diff this gives me the difference between two days two dates okay and what are the arguments so the first argument is a day a day okay next is obviously the date so in this case my date is given here I'm just going to copy here, copy it, okay, this date, what is the next date that we want? The next date is registration date, okay, so I'm going to say registration underscore date, all right, now when we do this, we will get a day, for example, if the registration date is, let's say, this, okay, then we will get zero, zero will be the output of this particular function. If the registration date is, let's say, 2nd January, so the difference between these two dates will be 1, 
and so on okay but what we essentially want to do here is we want to find out what is the start date that is what is the start date of that week all right in order to do that i can use another function which is date add and i'll tell you what we are going to do here okay before that let me do something like this here and i'll tell you why we, i'm doing this okay so see what happens is when i divide it by 7 okay for example let's let's take my date as uh, 3rd 3rd january okay so in this case if the registration date is 3rd january and i am doing this that is i am finding the difference between dates i will get 2 right the number of days between registration date and this date is 2 okay so my answer is 2 here now what i'll do is i divide that answer by 7 i'm taking 7 because we want to find the start of the week right so it's a weekly calculation so i'll divide it by 7 now notice one thing dividing by 7 is a integer division i'm dividing by an integer so what happens is the result that is 2 divided by 7 what is 2 divided by 7 you may say it's 0 point something right so in integer division we don't count the uh, remainder and we'll just use the uh, first term of the coefficient uh, i mean the quotient okay so when you do an integer division you're getting a zero here okay and you do multiply it by a 7 so that's again 0 so what it says is the start of the week if the start of the week is 0 it's the same week okay only if the start of the week is uh, another date that's when you get a uh, new week okay so let me show you how so i'm doing this division uh, with date difference when what i'm going to do is i'm going to use another function that is date add in date add, I'm going to use day and let this be like this, comma, and I'm just going to paste the date here, okay, the starting uh, week date, so to say. Now, one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this whole thing as a date. You can use cast or you can use com uh, convert. And let's say this is the date, okay? Now, what we can also do is, uh, we can name this as, let's say, week start. Week start. And where are we finding it from? From runner's table, okay? So this is your CTE. Let me just uh, clean it up a little. Okay, select runner ID. Then what are you selecting? You are just selecting the date. All right, from runners. Now let me tell you what is happening here. So what's happening here is, uh, it's basically giving you the week start. Okay, so you. So you first calculate this. So let's say now the registration date is let's say 8th, 8th of January. Okay. So when you calculate this, what do you get? 8th of January minus 1st of January. That is 7 days. Okay. So you get the number of days. Now 7 days divided by 7. 7 by 7 is what? 1. Right? Integer division. 1. Then multiply it by 7 again. So what do you get? 7. Now in this case, you are actually getting what? You are actually getting 7 days. And this function that is date add, what it does is, it adds these 7 days to our original date, that is 1st of January. And that's how you will get the next week, that is 1st of January plus 7 days equals 8th of January. So you will get a runner ID and you will get a start week date next week. But if the date is, let's say, somewhere below 7, okay, let's say it's 3, you will get a 0 here, okay. Zero div uh, 3 divided by 7 will be uh, 0, multiplied by 7 will be 0 again, 
and this add function what it does is to this particular date it will add nothing that is it will add zero and the start date of the week will remain the same all right so let me run this uh, whole thing and then show you before that let me just run this particular table so execute there you go so you have runner id one what is the week start date it is first what is runner id two week start date is the same and so on okay so this particular uh, you know this particular uh, function will help you understand the logic behind the uh, inbuilt function that you can use in postgres or uh, mysql all right now the question actually says how many runners okay so you need to find the count so i now have my cte so i can just run my cte just one second let me hide it okay so i can run my cte using another select statement so i'll select what i'll select the week start okay and then i will count the number of rows and i'll name it at name it as runners count and from where am i picking it i'm picking it from weekly periods okay and since i'm using a count i will also use a group by group by week start and let's run it and see what comes out okay so week start is one then you have eight then you have 15 and runner count two one one that's the answer okay if you want to look at the table just have a look so week starts on first you have two runners that is one, runner one and runner two in the same week then you have week eight you have only one runner you have week 15 that is week three and you have only one runner that is runner id four so that answers your first question i hope uh, this was easy to follow if not please post your comments and i'll uh, you know probably try to do a separate video altogether on this particular date function itself all right moving on to the next question that is what was the average time in minutes it took for each runner to arrive at the pizza runner hq to pick up the order okay so we want to calculate the uh, time in minutes now in this case what i'm going to do is i'm directly going to use the minute function and uh, i'm not taking into account seconds which add up and you know let's say uh, 30 seconds plus 30 seconds is one minute i'm not doing that i'm just taking minutes probably in another video i'll deep dive into you know how you can manage seconds and minutes together it's, it's pretty straightforward but i'm not doing in this video just to keep it uh, simpler for you right all right so what we can do is uh, we obviously need the runner id here so i'll say runner id all right what else do i want i want the average time in minutes okay now first thing i will need is you to understand what it requires uh, in this question right what was the average time in minute it took for each runner to arrive at the pizza runner headquarter to pick up the order now how do you calculate the time required to arrive at the pizza runner headquarter so that can be calculated by checking two columns which is your uh, order time and pickup time so if you subtract order time from pickup time you can actually get the duration okay so this duration that you see is different this is actually the time required uh, after picking up the order and till delivered Till delivering this for example if you let's say let's take one uh, example let me take all right let me take uh, order id one okay so order id one uh, the order time was this right 6 5 pm okay and what was the pickup time of order id one it was 6 15 pm so basically there is a difference of 15 uh, 10 minutes right 6 5 and 6 15 there is a difference of 10 minutes okay so if you subtract this from pickup time that is pickup time minus order time will give you the number of minutes it took for the runner to arrive at the pizza headquarter all right so using this logic 
let's solve this particular question okay all right coming back so what i'm going to do is i am going to do pick up time pick up underscore time minus minus order time okay this is something i can do now since you are subtracting times and everything uh, i think it's best to uh, use a cast that is a convert and you can cast it as uh, time okay in this particular order now what you can also do is you can uh, since we are subtracting everything hours minutes and seconds we just want the minutes right so i'm going to say take the minute okay all right and you can't just take the minute directly you have to use date part so date part minute comma whatever uh, you are selecting as the minute okay and one more thing is you have to find the average okay not just the date for each runner you have to find the average for that i can use average okay and everything comes together all right i can name this as let's say average time in minutes okay now from where am i selecting this i'm selecting this from runner order and i need to join the customer order table as well because the order time is in this table okay so i'll say join customer orders name it as, as ceo and what is the condition ro dot order id equals ceo dot order id since you are using an aggregate function which is average average is an aggregate function you need to use group by as well all right so that's it this is your query let's see if this works execute and you see runner id 1 took 15 minutes uh, let's validate that runner id 1 okay runner id 1 on average he took 15 minutes he or she right average time is 15 minutes okay probably i can check let's check for runner id 3 okay since runner id 3 i think only has one order let's check that runner id 3 has how many orders let's see one two but this order is cancelled okay so runner id 3 only has this particular order okay so let's see how much time uh, was taken so runner id 3 on the left side where do we have order number is 5 so order id 5 okay how much time so the order time was 9 pm all right and what was the pickup time it was 9 10 i told you i'm just looking at minutes now 9 and 9 10 so pickup time minus order time is what 10 minutes and what is our output 10 minutes so it's working all right so that was your second query moving on to the third query now the question is is there any relationship between the number of pizzas and how long the order takes to prepare all right so uh, from the tables we can actually figure out that you know uh, that the relationship between the number of pizzas and uh, the time taken uh, you know for pizza preparation could be related if we find out a few things so the first thing is you know you find out which pizza it is uh, the order id basically and let's say in each order how many pizzas were there okay and then we can find out the time taken between order and pickup okay so that's what they are asking is there any relationship between the number of pizzas and how long the order takes so one order can have multiple pizzas in it okay so that's what we are trying to find here what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to uh, create a common table expression now so that we can from that common table we can find out these things that is uh that is you know the pizzas delivered the number of pizzas delivered and the average time taken from those pizzas okay 
and then we can find out if there is any relationship or not. So I'll start with a CTE. I'll name it name it as CTE itself. You can name it uh, whatever you want, but make sure it sort of reflects what you are trying to do with that query. Okay. And I'm going to say um, I want the order ID. Okay. I want the count of this ID. All right. So for each order, I want to know how many pizzas were there in that order. And I will name this thing as uh, del pizzas delivered. Okay. Pizzas delivered. All right. So basically that is giving me the count. Then what I'm going to do is I want to know the uh, time taken. Okay. So in this case, I will just take the previous query and paste it here. So this gives me the time taken for preparation, right? Because this basically is pickup minus order time. So the pickup is only done when the order is fully prepared. Okay. One thing is remove the average part because we are taking uh, for each of the, you know, order IDs, we want to find out what was the time taken. And I'll name this as time taken. Time taken. All right. So these three things is what we want and from where do we want it? We want it from customer orders. Okay. Orders. Let's join it with runner orders. What is the condition? Condition is order ID equals ro dot order id what else okay one thing to notice is there any relationship between the number of is how long the order takes to prepare all right the preparation is basically for orders which are not cancelled okay so we will exclude any order that is cancelled here because we know that you know there were a couple of orders for example this order and this order these two orders were cancelled so we will exclude those what is the condition whenever cancellation is equal to null that that means this order is not cancelled whenever cancellation is not null that means this order is cancelled okay just remember that so i'm going back and i'll say where cancellation is null okay cancellation is null that means that order was not cancelled and since we are using uh, account here i'll group it by order id and i'll also group it by this date function that we are using all right I think we only need two brackets. Yeah. Okay. What else? Okay. So I think the, our CTE is done. So our common table expression is done. Okay. And the next part is you just select. So I'm selecting pizzas delivered from it, which is nothing but uh, your count. Okay. Pizzas delivered. Uh, don't mind the uh, you know, the red lines below showing error. Since we are using a CTE, sometimes uh, there is a possibility that you may get uh, such uh, error notifications. But ignore them. Write your query. Run it. If you find an error, then go back and check it. Okay. And what we want to find out is we want to actually find out the average of this uh, time taken. Okay. So now we will find the average average as avg time per pizza okay and from where are we finding it we are finding it from cte and let's group it by pizzas delivered all right so this is our query let's go ahead and run it before that let me show you what the cte looks like so CT looks like this. So you have our order IDs. 
So for each order, how many pizzas were delivered? For example, here you have, uh, yeah, for order ID 10, two pizzas were delivered and time taken was 15, okay? So now, scrolling down, we will basically select everything, run it, and there you go. Since we don't want the order ID, okay, that's why we have excluded order IDs and just taken the rest. So pizza delivered one. So whenever you have one pizza delivered, it takes, uh, you know, average time of 12, 12 minutes basically. Okay. So your average time per pizza in minutes. Sorry. Let me execute this again. Okay. Yeah. So it takes 12 minutes. If, if the order has two pizzas, it takes 18 minutes. Okay. And then if the order has three pizzas, it takes 29 minutes. So I think instead of this, we can say pizzas per order. Okay. I think that will make more sense. Pizzas per order. Pizzas per order. Okay. Let me run this now. Okay, so pizzas per order. If, if the order has one, it takes 12 minutes to 18, 3, 9, 29. What it means is the more the pizzas, the larger the order preparation time. So you can write your insight or you can probably say relationship. What is the relationship? Always put it in comments so that it does not run with your code. Okay. It basically is more pizzas per order result in a larger order preparation time. That is your insight, okay? This is basically your insight. So hope this was clear. Let me move on to the next question, which is our question number four. All right. Question number four is, what was the average distance traveled for each customer? Okay. Average distance traveled for each customer. That means we have a distance column here, right? So the runner ID travels a distance of this. What we basically want to find out is, let me erase it and show you now. Just hold on. Yeah. Let me erase all this. Okay. So what it is asking is, what was the average distance traveled? Okay. So you have the distance column here. Okay. We can take the average of it. But it says traveled for each customer. Okay. Do you have a customer detail here? No. Customer details are in this particular table. So you will have to join these two tables. That is the first thing you can do. Find out the average of the distance and also find out for each customer. That is nothing but the customer ID. So you have to list the customer IDs and then list the average time taken or you know, average, sorry, not time, average distance taken, okay? So I'll come here. It's a pretty straightforward query. So you select the customer ID, okay? Select the customer ID. And then you find out the average of distance, okay? And you name it as uh, ABG distance in kilometers, okay? In kilometers, all right? And from where are you finding it? You're finding it from customer orders, CEO. You'll have to obviously join the other table, runner order because distance comes from runner order on co dot order id equals ro dot order id and since you are using an average which is an aggregate function please use group by all right so let's go ahead and run it execute 
there you have you have your customer id on the left and what was the average distance traveled for each customer you have it on the right now if you you see for uh, your second result that is 16.7333 there are a lot of threes okay so if you want you can just trim it and keep whatever number of uh, decimal places you want there is a function which you can use that is called round so you can round the you know number of decimal places so i'm just going to keep two here okay so two and if you run it again so there you go so you only have two decimal spaces now that is 0 0.73 in this case 0 0.4 since there is nothing after four that's why only one is coming all right so this is how you can trim it a round is a very important uh, function that you can use in you know data cleaning as well when you are actually trying to clean your integer data or float data okay all right let's move on to the next question what was the difference between the longest and shortest delivery times for all orders so this is basically asking us to find a difference between the max value of your delivery time and the minimum value of your delivery time so you would have understood the you know what to do in this query already so i'm going to select the maximum of duration okay i'm going to subtract it with the minimum of duration okay so your table is this all right see so what you have to find out is right here so you have the duration here you just need to find out what was the maximum duration and what was the minimum duration subtract it and that's your output but make sure delivery okay so make sure that the order is delivered so there is a condition also coming in so i'm going to say max of duration minus min of duration and i will name this as a difference between longest or we can say longest minus shortest in minutes okay and from which table are you selecting it from from runner orders and what is the condition where duration is not null okay you can also use uh, or cancellation is null okay so both the conditions are true whether the duration is not null okay that is duration has some values or can cancellation is null that is cancellation should be null so that other values appear on the left which basically is uh, what you see on the screen okay all right i'm just going to remove this where duration is not null let's select run this query and there you have it so it is just asking us for the difference okay so the difference is 30 minutes 30 minutes difference between the longest and shortest delivery times for all orders okay it's not asking for each order if it was asking for each order you should have selected uh, you know for each order what was the max delivery time and min delivery time okay but that is not the case since each order will obviously be delivered in a single shot so that question also does not make sense to be honest okay so for all orders this is how you go about it moving on to the next question which is right below that is what was the average speed okay again speed how do you calculate speed speed is basically distance by duration okay so what was the average speed for each runner for each delivery uh, and do you notice any trend for these values okay any trends for these values all right we will find out the trend but first we let's uh, solve the query so i'm going to say i'm going to find out the speed i'm going to say runner id then i'm going to find out the average of average speed right so average speed is nothing but your average of distance divided by duration okay but in this case we want to find the 
you know uh, average speed in hours that is a kilometer per hour so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this by 60 so if you multiply it by 60 you will get the result in hours okay and a small addition here that is we are going to round the result to two decimal places okay so this two is for uh, this particular round function and average distance by duration okay distance by duration all right and that's how you find it so i think okay uh, average has uh, two closing brackets round has one okay fine the number of brackets are fine and you can name this as average speed in kilometer per hour from which table are you finding it from from runner orders where the distance is not null and you group it by the runner id runner id and let's order by uh, okay we don't have anything to order it by but let's see so i'm going to run this execute it okay it says runner id one average speed was this two was this three was this are you able to find anything out from here uh, one good thing to do here would be take a sum of uh, take a sum of distance okay and name it as let's say kilometers and what we can do is let's order it by kilometers okay so if you do this execute okay so runner id 3 uh, for 10 kilometers it took 40 uh, the speed was 40 for runner id 1 the kilometers traveled were 63.4 and the speed increased slightly and kilometers again increased a bit speed speed increased a bit so what is your insight that is your trend or you know what is the insight the insight here is or the trend here is runners with more distance to cover had a greater speed than others that's your insight right because see the the as the kilometers increased the speed also increased in order to cover more distance okay so that's our tendency right when the the distance is more you will try to uh, reach at your destination uh, by increasing your speed all right so that that's a very common uh, phenomenon that's is that is what is happening here all right cool so we are moving on to the seventh question now what is the question what is the successful delivery percentage for each customer okay in here all you have to find out is uh, the percentage of you know successful delivery so successful delivery is nothing but uh, number of orders delivered divided by orders received okay so that's what we will find here what i'm going to do is let me first find out what were the number of orders delivered and the orders received okay that is something you need to know first so i'm going to use a cte here so let's say order stats is the name of the cte okay that's what we are going to use and i'm gonna say select just hold on let me let me just scroll down a bit okay so i'm going to say select runner id what else do i want i want the number of orders received right so count of order id gives me the number of orders received okay what next next is we want to find out the number of orders that were delivered 
what is the best way to find it so from here if you have to find out the number of orders that were delivered how do you find it you will you can do two or three things i think you can join these tables and then you know uh, let's say find out if if the cancellation is null then that order is delivered okay but that is a long route to take you can actually use case statements here okay so uh, what you can do is let's say i'm going to say case when a cancellation is null okay that means the order is delivered when cancellation is null then let's take one else we'll have zero okay and you end it all right so this is your case statement and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a simple sum of this okay so uh, it is just going to give me one if the order is delivered and it will keep adding okay and we will name this as orders delivered there might be an easier way to do it i'm not sure i'm just thinking on the go and doing it for you uh and then we'll say from runner orders and since we are using a sum we have to use a group by so the more you practice it will you will get a hang of it you know uh, whether you know when to group by or not or you you might forget to use a group by but the more you practice the more you solve queries like this uh, it will come to you very naturally that you know whenever you, you are using a sum an average a count or any aggregate function you have to use a group by okay so this is our ct let's see what the ct is okay it gives us the runner id and for each runner id the orders they received and the orders they delivered okay so the structure is clear now all we have to find out is what is the percentage okay so i'll say runner id okay for each runner right it says each runner that's why that's why we are using runner id here each runner uh, i'm going to say orders underscore delivered okay so this is orders delivered divided by orders received okay and what can i say so i can probably say this this is uh, i can name this as successful delivery okay from order stats we have to find out the percentage remember but i'm just checking this okay so it says 100 which is not right because what is happening is orders delivered okay this count will give me an integer and uh, orders received is i mean orders received is obviously an integer so integer division is happening here when that happens you don't get a remainder or you don't get a float value so what i can do is i can actually convert this to float and then divide okay so i'm going to say cast cast this as float okay that's done and once i have i can just cast one of these as float okay that's 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 the only requirement so once that is done let's see if we get our answer or not okay so we are here okay 1 0 0.75 and 0 0.5 so we are somewhere uh, close to our uh, output now we only want to find the percentage that is 1 will be 100 this will be 75 percentage this will be 50 percentage so all you need to do is basically multiply it by 100 okay so take this whole thing take this whole thing and multiply this by 100 okay so there you go 175 and 50 is the output now if you want you can also you know include a percentage sign uh, one way to do it will be you if you want you can just let's say cast it again as a variable character okay 
So if you cast it like, let's say, uh, I'm going to say as where care 10. Okay, I'm going to change the data type of this. Plus, I'm going to add a percentage symbol. Okay, so what, what, I, what I have done is I have cast this whole thing as a variable character. And at the end, I have just added a percentage symbol. Okay, so let's see if the percentage symbol comes now. There you go. So you have 100%, you have 75% and then you have 50%, which is nothing but your order delivery success percentage. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's about it for part B. I'll come uh, with part C very soon. And uh, please go through the video, practice it. If you have any questions, post it on the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, colleagues and your, your you know, uh, family. Uh, that's, that's basically it. Thanks, thanks again and take care.